It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you, and welcome to this special edition of Science Bowl. The two teams you're about to meet have won once already. Today's winner will move on as the third of four semifinalists in this year's middle school competition. Let's meet the teams. First, from Gwyn Park Middle School, would you say hello to Victoriana Nunn, Serenity Smith, and Hope Bolding. And from Martin Luther King Jr. Middle School, here they are, Joseph Baylor, Michael Stroud, and Joshua Webb. And now here are the categories of questions we use on the Science Bowl. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green Things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body Systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. Here on the Science Bowl, we arrange our game board according to question difficulty with the easier questions on the left. They're worth five and ten boys. The tougher ones are worth 15, 20, and ultimately 25. Both of our teams start out at 50 points. No penalties ever for incorrect answers. And as we were saying at the top of the show, today's winner comes back as the third of our four middle school semifinalists. Let's make sure everything works properly. Let's go over to the red team. Serenity, would you try that buzzer? Looks good, sounds good. Good luck to you and to Victoriana and to Hope. And Michael, how about the green teams? Give it a push. It's a joint push over there. Joseph and Michael and Josh, good luck to you as well. Congratulations on making it this far in the competition. Martin Luther King, you have won a county championship in the past. Gwen Park, you've never done it. You could be making history in this, our 31st year of competition. Let's have a good game. We go alphabetically, G before M. So Gwen Park and Serenity, let's play the ball. Can I have green things for 10, please? Green things for 10 points. Teams, if you go to Arizona to the Saguaro National Cactus Monument, you would find plants that are halophytic, hydrophytic, or xerophytic. Martin Luther King. Hydrophytic. Not hydrophytic. If you went to see those cactus at the Saguaro National Monument, would you see plants that are halophytic, hydrophytic, or xerophytic? Halophytic. It's the xerophytic, the ones that live in desert areas where the water is rather spare. Let's try again red. Um, zoo parade for 10, please. Zoo parade for 10 points. Teams, <laughs> if you were out and you were looking for yellow-bellied sapsuckers and blue-footed boobies, what kind of animals would you be looking for? Wood Park. Uh, um, monkeys. Not monkeys, no. Yellow-bellied sapsuckers and blue-footed boobies are two kinds of what? Birds. Birds, that's right. Okay, go green. Physical okay. for 20. Let's get physical for 15. Let's get physical for 15 points. Teams, H2O water is two atoms of hydrogen and one of oxygen, making up what M initialed? Martin Luther King. Molecule. Molecule, that's it. Thank you, Joe. Go green. Um, body, systems. body systems for 15. Body systems for 15 points. Teams, what V initialed trap doors are found in your blood vessels and also Gwyn Park? Ventricles. Not ventricles, good try. What V initial trapdoors are found in your blood vessels, in the chambers of your heart, and also in the pipes in your home? Um, veins? Valves, valves. Try again green. Okay. okay let's um, Remember, science talk science among yourselves. Science talk among yourselves science before you science offer an answer. Potpourri. Go. Science potpourri for 15. Potpourri for 15 points. Teams, a lot of people today are raising chickens in their houses for the eggs. They're starting to treat them like pets. There are even reports of people kissing their chickens. Don't do that because they're still carrying Martin Luther King. Salmonella. Salmonella, yeah. Don't do that. Kissing chickens. Go, green. Green things for 15. Green things for 15 points. Teams, the World Food Prize this year went to a group of scientists who developed a sweet potato that was very high in this vitamin, Gwyn Park. 
Vitamin A. Vitamin A, absolutely right. So many people in the world are blind because of a lack of vitamin A. This sweet potato could go a long way to preventing that. You're on the board. Go red. Dayline Science for 15, please. Dayline Science 15 points. Teams on August 21st, 2017, for the first time in 99 years, the path of totality will stretch across the United States because what celestial event will take place? Sorry. Give me the whole title of Martin Luther King. Um, Halley's Comet is going to pass over. Not Halley's Comet. What celestial event will take place for the first time in 99 years that will be visible here in the United States? The path of totality will stretch across the country. What do you think? Um, uh, a total solar eclipse. Total solar eclipse. Go red. Um, let's get physical for 10, please. Physical for 10 points. Teams, this form of frozen precipitation is often compared in size to golf balls, nickels, pennies, <laughs> Martin Luther King. Hail. Hail, yes, yeah, sometimes even softball size. That's when you better get inside. Go green. 15. Zoo parade for 15. Zoo parade 15 points. Teams, listen carefully. The ruffed grouse is the state bird of this state where the NFL Eagles play King. Pennsylvania? Pennsylvania is right. Yes, go. Let's get physical for 20. Get physical for 20 points. Teams, your question is as follows. Galileo was excommunicated from the Catholic Church because of his heliocentric theory. What is that? That he thought the sun was the center, of, or that he thought the sun is the center of the solar system. Absolutely right, and of course he was correct because he disproved or he upset the belief that the Earth was the center of everything. Well done. All right, uh, 120, 135 for King, 65 for Gwyn Park, and the advantage goes again to King. Green things for 20. Green things for 20 points. Teams, in the fall, the Potomac River is covered with a lot of green gunk because. Yes. Algae? Not algae, Gwyn Park. The green stuff, which includes some algae that is on the Potomac in the fall, Gwynn Park, is because of submerged aquatic vegetation that is releasing their leaves, just like the trees on land will release their leaves. What kind of de-initial plants do we call creatures, plants rather, that release their leaves in the fall? Deciduous. That's what I want to hear. Okay, go red. Now you're cooking. Um. Science potpourri for five, please. Potpourri for five points. Teams, filmmakers use computer models and math equations to get the snow just right in this Disney blockbuster. Frozen. King. Frozen. Frozen. That's it. Go. Um, science potpourri for 20. Potpourri for 20 points. Teams, if you go to the southern hemisphere and you look at the sky, you will see one of these C initial groups of stars that looks like a toucan. Serenity. Constellation. Yes, ma'am. Good. Go. Ooh, hold that thought. The buzzer says we've come to the end of the first round. It's been a good one. Our score right now, Martin Luther King 140, Gwynn Park 105. Tight game. Back in a moment. Don't go away. Welcome back to Science Bowl, an important match here today, deciding who will become the next semifinalist in our middle school competition. Martin Luther King is a past champion in our 31 years on the air, and Gwynn Park has never won a championship, and I know they can taste it right now. We're going to give them just a little bit of a break and introduce them to you. If you did not see them the first time they competed this year, let's go to Gwynn Park Middle School. And Serenity, tell us the Gwynn Park story. Where is Gwynn Park? That's down in the southern part of the county, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it? On, it's on Dyson Road by um, Gwynn Park High School. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of a rural area down there. We go, I remember you drive down that road and you keep on going forever and you reach <laughs> Camp Schmidt. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> that, or the end of the earth. It always seems like it's going to be down there. Tell me who your principal is. Our principal is Miss Moore. Miss Moore, and she has been such a supporter of this, and yeah. she's here today. And uh, we had one opening left this year, and she grabbed it, and I'm so glad she did because otherwise I wouldn't have met you girls. You're just wonderful. You're just Thank wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. And Serenda, you've been here before. Yes. In yeah. Fifth grade with Miss Losi. Right. When you were at Brandywine Elementary, so now you're grown up here, and uh, you're doing such a great job here. Tell me um, the sponsor of your team. Miss Reddick. Miss Reddick out there, and she is so happy that you girls are doing <laughs> yes. so well. I mean, I saw her. She's floating on cloud nine down there. <laughs> and who's the alternate on your team? Um, now it's Diane Palmer. Wonderful. And Victoriana, you were the yeah. alternate. It's nice to see you have a Thank chance to you. play. And you've been smiling since you got here. We <laughs> love having you here. 
So Randy, tell me about Gwynn Park. What are, what's something that people don't know about Gwynn Park that they should know? Gwynn Park is a great by choice school, not great by chance, and there's never a point in time where you can say there's nothing to do because there's tons of fun activities and things that you can get engaged in. That yeah, sounds like a perfect, I want to go there. I want to go there. And great by choice and not by chance. I like that twist on that. What do you want to do someday? I want to either be a math teacher, preferably Algebra 1, or a pediatric nurse. Well, you'll be successful whatever you choose. A smart young lady, good captain, too. Hope, nice to have you with us today. And you were telling me when you were here before that you're interested in forensic anthropology. Yes. And for people at home who don't know that, even they're watching the science ball, what is that? It's like when you, well, I want to be a forensic anthropologist, so I want to do like when people get hurt and they're killed. <laughs> like you mess with their bones and figure out what happened to them so that you can give closure to their families. Yeah. So, you know. So it's not just, you know, ooh, I get to solve this problem. Because there are a lot of, you know, it, it's serious business. Yes. If you don't know what happened to your loved one, you know, you can bring some, uh, some comfort, as you said. I think that's great. Um, what's your favorite subject? I mean, obviously, you're good in science. Yeah. What else do you like to do? Um, I like social studies. Yeah. 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 Well, you, you, you have a lot of poise. Uh, Thank hopefully you, sir. you're welcome. I hope uh, you consider something in the public light, too, because you, you're a good speaker, you Thank know, you. and uh, something like politics, uh, good presentation. Yeah. <laughs> Victoriana. Welcome to the show. How are you? Thank you. Tell me about yourself. What do you do in your spare time? Um, I play sports and I like to watch TV and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Do you have a favorite TV show? Um, right now, I really like The Voice and stuff like that. That's great. Yeah. See, if you had said Science Bowl, I could have given you a few oh. extra points. Darn. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Um, what, uh, um, what would you like to do someday? Um, I would like to do something with technology and engineering because I always say I want to make the world better with yeah. technology and stuff. I think that's great. And of course the STEM subjects are yeah. now hot and the President of the United States just gave a lot of money to increase you know, instruction in STEM and uh, it's hot. We need people like you, Victoria. <laughs> nice to have you. you with us. You're welcome. Martin Luther King. Nice to have you guys here, and Mike, you told me that you're a baseball player and you're actually competing on the day or the day after we're taping with Gwynn Park, right? Yes. So yes. you, you, you kind of want to get them on this set and you want to get them on the field, too? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It'd be no, nice. And the girls are saying, not if we have anything to do about that. <laughs> Tell us about Martin Luther King. Miss Wilteson is, Robin Wilteson is the wonderful principal there. She's been there for many years. And the sponsor of your team? Miss Butler. Ah, Miss Butler. She has been here uh, for many, many years. And uh, what a devoted and wonderful teacher she is. And she's a, an award-winning teacher, too. And we congratulate her and thank her. Tell me about any alternates on your team. We have Rahel and Kevin. Wonderful. They'll be out in just a few months. They are so excited for you guys. Tell me about... Uh, King, uh, you told me before you got every sport under the sun over there, all kinds of extracurricular activities. Is there something else about King that we don't know that we should? The teachers are just really, really encouraging and they're really, really nice yeah. because the way our schools are today, there are some things that are tough to teach, there's some things that are easier, and they just make the whole process uh, of learning a lot more fun and a lot easier on the kids who have to go through it. They just do a great job. They're really nice. They really want you to get better. Wow. You should make a commercial for the teachers at King. That was a beautifully uh, uh, put together tribute, Mike. Thanks very much, and I know they appreciate that. Uh, I know you'd like to be a professional baseball player someday, yeah. and uh, like I say, never to give up on that dream. But you have a plan B or C. What else are you thinking about? Yes, I'd really like to go in, if, if that doesn't work out, I'd really like to go into aerospace engineering or possibly electrical engineering. Wonderful. So you're obviously a good math student as well as a, a sharp science student. And how many times have you been on, uh, have you been on this show? Uh, this, this would be my sixth time. Sixth time, yeah. So we've watched you grow up here on the show, and you're, just, you're a great player, Mike. Nice to have you back. Josh, nice to have you here. Tell us the Josh story. What do you do when uh, you're not uh, uh, in school? Well, I have to do homework for school, of yes, course. Yes, yes. But I also play video games, like oh. read books, and... What kind of books do you like, Mike, like or Josh? What kind of books? Fantasy books, stuff yeah. like that. And how many hours do you have a certain amount of time you set aside for homework? Uh, one or two. One or two, all right. Maybe. Do you feel like you have just enough or too much or not enough? Just enough. That was my multiple choice question. Okay, that sounds good to me. And someday, what are you going to do? You're going to be a computer programmer, right? Yes. Yeah, you'd be a good one. You'd be a good one. Nice to have you on the show. Joseph, nice to have you here. Uh, sixth grader and uh, very talented young man. How do you come by all your science knowledge? How do I come by? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know so much. 
Well, you see, um, I find that's very important to study and to, like, whenever something's presented to you, you better absorb as much as, po as possible. Try and learn as much from it. Yeah. So that's how I learn. When opportunities come along, is, yeah, maximize those chances. That's, that's very wise. Uh, what do you do in your spare time, Joe? Um, I like to uh, read, listen to music, play video games, and I like to play the trumpet. Very good. Uh, Harry Potter books? Ah, uh, yeah, they're my favorite. Yeah, they're absolutely. amazing. I remember you telling me that. And someday, professionally, what do you want to do? Uh, I want to be an experimental physicist. Wow. That's just, uh, what was the epiphany? What got you interested? What sparked that? Well, I've always been really interested in physics and how, like, I've always been amazed about how people create different um, equations for how all these things in the natural world happen. So I decided that I'd be, you know, in the phys physics branch, and I thought I'd be in experimental physics because that's like when people test different hypotheses and see if they are true or incorrect. Absolutely right. And so much that we know about the world that we take for granted is courtesy of uh, physicists, right? Yeah. You doing all right over there, Josh? What you doing? You just have to get your microphone back on. Okay, get yourself hooked back up there as we get back into the game. Uh, Gwynn Park is at 105, and Martin Luther King is at 140, and you can see that we have a lot of points still to give away. And the last correct answer came from the red team. So, Serenity, let's go. Can I have body systems for 10, please? Sure, body systems for 10 points. Teams, carbon monoxide poisoning, which is a terrible thing, is by people who have had it said, they say it's like having the flu, but without running one of these. Serenity? A fever. A fever, yeah, a flu without the fever. Still not a great thing. Go. Um, Dateline Science for 10, please. Dateline Science for 10 points. Teams, this famous American inventor said that, excuse me, I'll, uh, let me restart that again. This famous American scientist was the man who best explained why the sky is blue, but he's better known for his theory of relativity. Albert, 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 Albert Einstein. Einstein, yeah. Okay, go, green. Um, body systems for 20. Body systems, 20 points. Teams, multiple choice question. If a doctor takes a sample of living tissue to examine it for pathogens or disease, is he doing a necropsy, an autopsy, or a biopsy? Martin Luther King. It's a biopsy. It's a biopsy, absolutely right. An autopsy is on someone who has passed away, and a necropsy is on a dead animal. Green. Dateline science for 20. Dateline science, 20 points. Teams, the FDA has recently said that certain chemicals have to be removed from antibacterial soap. What is the FDA? Food Martin Luther King. The Food and Drug Administration. That's it. Good. Green. Um, Zoo Parade for 20. Zoo Parade, 20 points. Question is as follows, teams. The raccoon dog, which is a strange creature that lives in Japan, is the only member of this C initial group that includes wolves and dingoes. Yes, Michael. Canines? Canines, yeah, that hibernates. It's the only dog that hibernates. Go. Let's get physical for 25. Physical for 25 points. Teams, copper wire is so yesterday in linking up landline telephones. Today, it is these kinds of fibers that link up the phones, King. Optic fibers. Optic fibers, that's it, go. Science potpourri, Science potpourri for 25. For 25 points. Teams, you've probably heard, if you've watched The Big Bang Theory, about Schrodinger's cat which is an experiment where there's a cat inside of a box, and you don't know whether it is alive or it is dead. Oh, oops. What did you want to tell me, Serenity? Okay. Cat it alive or dead inside that box because you can't open it. Uh, that experiment has never really been done, Martin Luther King. So it is described by what H initial term that is derived from the educated guess that is used in experimentation. Hypothetical. Hypothetical, that's what I want to hear. Nicely done, go. Um, body systems for 25. Body system, 25 points. Teams, if you know how to ride bicycles, I bet you know how to ride a bike. If you don't ride a bike for 10 years, and someone gives you a bike, you can hop right back on and go like nobody's business. Because these fibrous tissues, part of the case, muscles. muscles have memory. Yeah, go. Zupra, or no, green things for 25. Green things for 25 points. Question is as follows. Scientists have discovered a fiber that is 10 times stronger than steel inside giant sequoias. These fibers are made from this indigestible carbohydrate that is found in, yes, serenity. Um, what is it, what is it? Um, not starch. No. Good try, no. The indigestible carbohydrate that is found inside of plants, particularly in the cell walls, is the source of this 10 times stronger than steel fiber. Um, 
Cellulose. Cellulose is the name of the sugar, the indigestible carbohydrate. All right, uh, green again. Dateline Science for 25. Dateline Science for 25 is a visual question. Would you look at the monitor in the studio? And it is multiple choice. Back in 1896, William Koenig used the recently discovered x-rays to do this to show two mummified Egyptian children. The x-rays themselves were invented by William Harvey, Anton von Leeuwenhoek, or William Rentgen. Who discovered x-rays? Harvey, Leeuwenhoek, or Rentgen? Rentgen. Rentgen is right. Yes, indeed, Gwen Park. Go. Um, Zupre for 25, please. Zupre for 25 points. Teams, your question is as follows. Look at the monitor. Another visual question. This glowing squid found in the depths of the ocean is not reflecting light. It is making... Bioluminescence. It is bioluminescence being demonstrated there. Making its own cold light. Absolutely right. Go. Green. Potpourri for 10. Potpourri for 10 points. Teams, a lot of scientists are upset that Vera Rudin, who studies dark matter, did not win this year's Nobel Prize in what field? Martin Luther King. Physics. Physics is right. Yes, sir. Go. Um, let's get physical for five. Physical for five points. Teams, because this area of the universe does look like a Mexican hat. It's known as this galaxy, Martin Luther King. Sombrero. The Sombrero Galaxy. That's it. Yes, sir. Um, body systems for five. Body systems for five points. Teams, in William Shakespeare's Julius Caesar, Mark Antony is about to address the crowd, and he says, friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your what? Ears. Ears. King. Ears. Ears. That's it. Good. Go. Uh, Dateline Science for five. Dateline Science for five points. Teams, recently we saw on the horizon a super version of this celestial object closest to the Earth it has been this century. Serenity. Mm -hmm. The moon. The super moon is right. Yes, ma'am. Go. Uh, the green things for five, please. Green things for five points. Teams, arborists say the two-thirds of Connecticut's trees are these acorn makers? Oak. King. Oak trees. Oak trees is right. Last question of the game. Zoop prayed for five points. Teams, it took six scientists traveling a thousand miles to discover Bombus polaris, which is a cold weather version of this honey making insect. Bee. 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 The Arctic bee. And with that, we come to the end of this round. It looks like Martin Luther King is moving on. We'll be back in just a moment. Don't go away. Welcome back to Science Bowl. Well, it's a battle of titans here today. Six outstanding young people, and uh, it looks like Martin Luther King has prevailed and will be moving on. Joining Walker Mill in Hyattsville in the semifinals, our final tally today is Gwyn Park 145, Martin Luther King 340, and uh, Michael and Josh and Joseph beaming over there for good reason. Ms. Butler, thank you for everything. We're going to see you, and Kevin and Rahel, congratulations. And I want to see some big smiles over here. I don't want to see you girls go. We love having you here. You didn't know you were going to be here, and you really played a super game. Hope and Serenity and Victoria Anna, keep that great smile there. And Diani, where is she back there? Give us a smile here. All right, good to have you here. And Miss Moore, thank you for taking time to be with us here. And uh, Miss Riddick, thank you again for stepping up and getting these young people ready. We loved having them here, and uh, we loved having you here too. I hope to see you next time on another edition of Science Bowl. I'm Dave Zarin. Till then, bye-bye. <laughs>